Hey folks, so what we have here is a bomb jack uh, PCB. This is a bootleg, it's not the original. It looks very much like the original. Uh, in fact, I can pretty much use the schematics from the original to fix this. It's, it's I, as far as I can tell, it's exactly the same. Um, including the pinout and, uh, and the RGB connection here. Um, so it, it's very interesting. I like working on these because like Double Dragon, Rygar, I think Arcanoid, some bootlegs and the... Uh, the Galaxian bootleg I worked on as well. Um, they, they're exactly similar to the uh, original one, so it's great if you find the schematics. The problem with a lot of bootlegs is there's no schematics for them, and uh, it makes working on them that much harder. But here, um, shouldn't be too much of a problem. So I'm gonna give this a quick visual inspection. I don't know if it works. Um, I can see already there's a, there's a chip missing here. Uh, to, uh, anyway, we have some of these chips here, and the RAMs are driving those uh, those uh, RGB outputs. We got the uh, uh, RGB, or it should be blue, green, red, something like that. Um, ground or sync and ground, or the other way around. Uh, I like to look up the uh, pinout uh, and make an adapter for uh, JAMA for this um, because I don't have. Uh, well, I have one in my cab, but it's actually soldered on the uh, on the on the board. So I might make one. I might make two when I'm at it, and uh, and modify the existing PCB I have in my cab. Uh, I'm gonna give, give this a clean. Uh, oh, okay. We got. Oh, there you go. <laughs> this guy has uh, fallen. I don't think it was ever soldered. In fact, that's interesting. Somebody worked on this already. You can see some of the chips were socketed. Um, I'm gonna put that aside. Uh, I might uh, might have a look at this guy as well. Might replace these big caps. Um, replace that chip over there. Um, and uh, well, let's start by uh, making an adapter. So I have here. I have a box of uh, just adapter stuff, connectors, and things like that. So I'm gonna need something for something that will fit this edge connector here. Uh, I think I have one left. This is, uh, yeah, that fits just nice. And uh, I see one JAMA fingerboard here. Have I more? Ideally, it'd be great to be able to solder this thing onto it and then slot that into my uh, JAMA connector, but I don't think Think that's going to be an option, so I might just use the the wires. Uh, use very short wires, solder them onto this, and uh, yeah, take it from there. Okay, let's do that. And then for the RGB connector here, I need what have I got? There you go. One, two, three, four, five. This guy might do. Let's see. Fair enough. Yeah, that works. And I think for the crimps, it uses these little uh, little guys. Let's see if I can focus on this. Yeah. And these uh, go in there, like that. So I might start with that. Get a nice length of uh, of wire, so it runs all the way to the uh, to the uh, connector here. Um, maybe run them like that, just for the sake of you know being nice, and uh, and then work on uh, making the, the adapter work for here. Okay, let's do that. Also here, I have a trusty box of just various lengths of cable. Um, but stuff I've recovered from the uh, all the cabs I've kind of dismantled and cleaned. Eh? That has no business there. Um, so I'm gonna mix and match cable. I'm gonna need good length. I have them sort of sorted by uh, coils of various lengths. So I'm sure I'll be able to find uh, everything I need there. Um, yeah, let's uh, start working. As I was uh, inspecting the uh, edge connector here, I could see that this tab here uh, looked broken, and this tab here and this tab here looked uh, broken. And indeed, um, 
I was getting no continuity. Um, so here, for instance, I have continuity here as well, but there's nothing here. Uh, yeah, it's broken right here. And same here. So I'm gonna have to fix those two tabs. I think this is, um, this should be five, or this should be pin one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And the seven and eight, if I look at the our uh, player one jump and uh, eight is not used still uh, I'm gonna fix them both uh, by putting maybe a bit of solder or a small jumper um, and then uh, I'll get on with the uh, edge connector uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open all this as well and just check everything is fine on the other side as well um, I could show you, I suppose, I got this uh, this uh, magnifier thing working. Let me set this up. It's just essentially a just a big camera, uh, and I'm using my. Uh, I think this is the one. Yeah. So let's move this over there. Ah. Actually, excuse me. Light. There you go. This should be better. There you go, so I'd uh, fiddle a bit, but um, yeah, this is the uh, pad and you can see the, the trace is broken here. It should be a clean trace, uh, yeah, broken trace and the next one I expect is just broken as well. It's a very, very handy uh, little tool, this thing, uh, I have to say, whoever sent it to me, um, to make yourself known, because it, uh, it was great and I had been thinking about uh, getting getting one at some point um, if you look at the uh, traces in detail it's really really cool there you go uh, it's very handy to inspect your uh, whether you have a, a, an actually broken trace or not um, very quickly anyway uh, let's fix those two guys and uh, keep working <laughs> Now, this crimps here, the metal part. Let me see if I can zoom in or focus a bit better. Okay, maybe focus on yeah. So this crimps and uh, this part here, and then you need to crimp the uh, plastic part. And now, this should go on, yeah, well, there's five pins, so it's the middle one, really. Uh, and that goes in this way, okay. There you go. Uh, you can actually see it here. And uh, to get these out, there's actually a little tab. Um, again, it's gonna be hard to show you, but... There's a little, see this little tab here? My, on my fingers, I was in shed. Um, but you need to push that down with a fine, fine tool here in order to take the crimp out uh, when it's, it's it should click, you should, you should hear it click ok, let's do this uh, five more times ok, so that's my uh, RGB connected here, I'm just gonna use some uh, zip ties here just to make everything nice and, uh, and tight, I don't want things to move too much 
and there you go. And I've used uh, used them uh, heat shrink um, this. So this goes into the jammer board. Uh, but next, I'm going to have to find a way to connect my uh, other edge connector uh, into the board. So let's do that. So I got my uh, adapter here done, um, just a lot of zip ties to secure everything in place and you know, nothing, there's no strain on the individual, uh, individual uh, uh, solder points. Um, hopefully that's all fine. Um, I've repaired those two traces, I've put the uh, caps back in place, I just did uh, an all around check. Uh, I haven't done anything here, um, I need to check whether there, need, there has to be something there. It could actually be uh, left empty for a reason. Somebody could have messed with it. So um, I need to double check. I'm, I might see if I can find a picture. And um, and then, um, well, let's power this on. Oh, there you go. So it's, it's booting actually. It's booting, it's going through the test mode. There's no RAM error so far. All oh, the RAMs seem fine. Wow, okay. Um, Inputs is there? Uh, I'm not sure if I can test that. Oh, I've got a wavy line here. I'm not sure what that's about. Um, dodgy caps. I'm not sure, but it's fine. So there's a color issue. There's a color. Colors aren't great. It's crediting lack uh, lunatic. So there could be some input problems. Oh my God! Look at that. <laughs> um, Controls up down can't seem to jump. Yeah, I can't jump. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, it could be my uh, oh, I started a two player. It could actually buy be my my um, adapter. I doubt it. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's accurate. Uh, button. Yeah, button one. Yeah, I'll, I'll double check my um, adapter, but I'm pretty sure it's okay. So, I think we are, we're gonna need to address these uh, funky graphics. So there's blue, there's some um, red, but I don't see, I don't think it's green then. Um, so it might be, it might be an issue with that. Um, chip missing because that would make sense you know it's very close to the RGB adapter um, these are RAMs I don't see them running hot and there's no sound that's the other thing there's no sound uh, so we're, we'll fix that last so okay let's first uh, fix that issue with uh, the colors all right so I have a, a picture here of the uh, the bomb jack PCB it's actually a, a high-res picture so we're looking at this chip here I'm not sure if I can read let's uh, flip this over uh, it's an LS174 and okay I have one of these indeed if I look at the schematics here uh, you get the uh, it's the R G and B lines uh, I'm not sure I think ground is somewhere here but these go through these uh, resistor arrays and into this 174 at 8B and uh, 7A and uh, indeed this is uh, this is 8B and 7A so these uh, 174 are actually driving um, the RGB signals or uh, what are these 174 top of my head are they buffers are they uh, anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, one is missing, and uh, we need it. In fact, 8B drives uh, drives the no 70. That's the blue signal. So maybe with green, uh, but no blue. Anyway, 
let's put this and uh, see what it does all right so I got my uh, new chip in and uh, there you go we got colors back uh, so next next uh, I'm, I'm gonna have to do something about that crazy uh, input stuff going on because I don't know what's going on um, so why does it input straight into uh, have I way to skip these uh, I'm gonna check the uh, make them a bit faster or is there a test mode yeah I'm gonna do a bit of research on the uh, on the uh, dip switches uh, I'm still gonna double check these uh, actually it could have been just a dodgy connection um, I think next though I'm gonna check these uh, inputs uh, because I could have uh, inverted uh, wires on my connector uh, this this is interesting though and now the uh, left isn't working I wonder if, uh, if yeah there's a dodgy chip somewhere um, there's no reason why it wouldn't work I'm gonna double check my uh, harness though my uh, adapter and uh, if not we're gonna start looking at where these uh, inputs um, probably some of these are here you know it could be somewhere there anyway um, and uh, and take it from there okay I got the uh, picture back straight uh, interestingly interestingly uh, this is something to do with my monitor um, I've actually had that, that now that I remember I had that happen with another arcade board uh, was it a Pac-Man clone um, and uh, yeah, if I if I work on the uh, horizontal alignment there, uh, it doesn't deal with that too well. In fact, this monitor has lost some uh, sharpness and brightness. Yeah, it might be time. I'm gonna see if I can play with the flyback at some point, but it might be time for a new uh, a new uh, cap kit on this guy. Uh, but for now, let's get back to the board. Uh, this is a problem with my monitor, this waviness, anyway, uh, so not the board, which makes sense because I was wondering why it would happen, like it's probably a cap thing or, um, and, and there's no reason why it would happen on the air. Anyway, uh, meaning, uh, well, next job is to double check the harness and uh, the adapter, sorry, and uh, check that our inputs are all working. Here we've got our um, just connectors, so I'm just gonna go with seven, which is uh, seven here is our uh, jump button. Um, so it's it's button one uh, on the jammer, but seven is going to this uh, A7, which is a top. Uh, it's the top edge connector, uh, and it's going into where is A7? Uh, it says here pin eleven. Interestingly, interestingly, let me uh, connect this. Um, this is where schematics uh, can differ from uh, bootlegs. But um, let me just put this controller here. And uh, if I trace my button one, which would be here, is it? Yeah, there you go. You can see uh, at the edge connector, I get a signal. It goes through this uh, pull up resistor capacitor. Um, uh, thing into these resistors out of that into these resistors so at the end we still have our signal and it's not going to pin 11 but it's going to is it this one pin 4 of this guy or is it this guy there you go so uh, it's going into this this chip now this is a uh, 258 LS258 these are uh, multiplexers and uh, Essentially, we've got one input, two input, uh, an enable here, that's always enable, um, it's high, and then a, t a line toggling thing. So this is toggling, this is always high, so essentially, it depend, the output here depends on uh, what we're getting uh, here or here. And uh, so if, if one is high, essentially, we should be uh, getting a, a signal here, but um, when I press here, I get I get, uh, sorry, when I press here, I get uh, something registering, but it's not happening on screen. So I suspect these uh, these guys are bad. So I'm going to take this one out and uh, test it in my tester. And I'm half tempted to... Uh, so I, I've uh, I've looked at the schematics. This These handle the, um, the uh, dip switches. Uh, these handle the controls. And this is for... Uh, this is the last one. Um, I did actually check... 
I can't find it anymore. I think that's the one player to player coin start thing. Um, so there's no point trying to um, to piggyback them here at this stage. So I'm just gonna take one out, um, this one, because I know already this is the one I'm looking at, and, uh, and test it. And if it's bad, well, I'm just gonna probably just replace the, all, the, all those three. All right, uh, so I uh, ended up, well, disordering all these uh, uh, 258 and uh, the outputs of these go into this uh, 373. That didn't solve our problem though. Um, so I might need to go back to the uh, the adapter. I'm not sure here. I'll, I'll try the adapter that's in the cab tomorrow. It's getting late here, but um, I decided to leave that give that a rest because I could see myself on the pass, uh, you know, of, uh, removing one ship on the on that um, bus one after another before. I actually knew what the problem was, but um, I, I turned my attention towards the uh, the sound, and um, there was no sound. So I actually tested the uh, the um, input of the, uh, the these are the uh, op amps here. Um, so we got one output, um, and you can see it's actually there's some trigger or something happening here. Let me check this one. Yeah, there you go. Uh, these were all flat, and there was nothing coming on the inputs either. Um, which was obviously telling uh, here's another output uh, so these are triggered as a sound occur you can see the uh, square waves um, and this is the AY38910 uh, this is a square wave generator that's all it does so I'm seeing square waves everywhere um, and then when I probed so th this actually goes uh, there comes directly well directly here the schematics these these are the up amp and uh, one of these lines actually pretty much comes directly from the channel uh, sorry channel output so the 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 uh, ay chip has three uh, square wave outputs channel a b and c and these are used in different patterns and fashions uh, to generate the uh, the square wave sounds and modulate it uh, and I could see that uh, there was no input, so this is channel A, B, and C somewhere here. And I could see there was no input on the uh, on the channel A uh, here. We have an input uh, input output on channel B. So let me just see if I can see something. No. Let's try this. There you go. So there's stuff happening on these. Uh, sorry, this is the CPU. Uh, channel baby actually this is not playing I need to start a game there you go um, so you can see now there's activity on these lines uh, what I've done and indeed sorry oh, we have a sound back it, it sounds a bit bare so I'm not sure if we're missing a channel it sounds like we're missing a channel the sound effects are fine I think we're missing a channel the problem was essentially, so uh, these had no in output and uh, I noticed the CPU, the Z80 was running a bit hot and uh, so I just put that, I took it out and uh, uh, tried it in my tester and even though it was booting, it came out as just dodgy, uh, interesting. So I'm not sure, uh, is there another processor running this guy um, on the other side I haven't really examined this board oh yes indeed <laughs> I assume this was uh, this was the Z80 running the system but no it's actually the one on the other side so this actually just um, looks after the entire entire audio system so that's good to know uh, but there you go we've got some of you back I think we're missing a channel so this possibly one of these guys is uh, is wrong um, I'm just gonna investigate, uh, just check the channels and uh, and see what the problem is. So this is the output of uh, of all the square waves uh, lines, and they're actually all triggering. So I'm wondering if the discrepancy I see, um, especially in the baseline, 
Is it actually an artifact or, or due to the fact that this is a bootleg? It's something that happens in Arkanoid as well. Let me lower the volume. Um, Arkanoid is much higher pitched, the music anyway, on the bootleg than on the original. And I wonder if that's, uh, if that's the same thing here. Actually, my voltage is running a bit low. Uh, let me just crank this up a tiny bit. But I wonder if this is... Um, if this is the same thing, because everything else is triggering, all the... Uh, so this chip some, seems to be having all the... Uh, triggering all the sound effects and the channel on this side of this chip is. And then here, those two, uh, with the base here... Sorry, with the base here, with an extra uh, line here, channel here, uh, with the... I think this is the accompaniment, uh, melody, sorry, melody and the uh, harmony line. Uh, behind it um, or is it the chords yeah the other line of the chords so they're all working fine actually so I think the sound is fine it's meant to be like that on the bootleg um, I, I should double check I suppose on the name um, uh, I will also just double check uh, all these ROMs just to make sure everything is fine but uh, we've got the color fixed We've got the uh, music issue sorted, and I think it's time to uh, to re readdress our problem with the uh, inputs. One thing I've done is I've taken this. Uh, uh, I made a small rack here just uh, to make all the voltages uh, more accessible uh, on top of the uh, what's over there. But here they're directly accessible, and I was just essentially shorting all the controls. So right and left are working, but jump is definitely not working, and I think that's that's what we need to fix first um, the jump button uh, and then with the jump button fixed I'll be able to access the on the menu if you press jump at the right time you can actually access all the test inputs so let's see if we can actually get that first sorted what's interesting is I've marked it here I get a, a signal a positive signal when I press jump right here it goes to this uh, this 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 one here uh, the input, so I get a signal at the input. The output, though, gets sort of uh, lost in a bus uh, that ends up here. I've replaced this guy, but that hasn't changed anything. So I need to just go back to the schematics and uh, maybe uh, try and find out what's uh, what's happening. I was rather hoping then this was the main CPU by changing it, it would magically fix it and disappear, but that was not the case. So. Let's go back to uh, the schematics. Well, after all that troubleshooting, I feel very, very stupid indeed. So, um, if you see here, this uh, this patch here and this patch here are the controls, and uh, uh, on the part side, which is here, um, I have three uh, inputs, and on the back, I have two inputs, as is shown here, uh, three and two, except. It's a part side that has two left and down, uh, left and down, and uh, it's this other side that has right up and jump. So this little setup is upside down. Uh, this is why well, I could actually go uh, right and left. Uh, in fact, I had correctly earlier on identified that I must have at some point inverted right and left, so I actually swapped them. I should have triggered, but I obviously didn't. So I just need to um, invert uh, up and jump, uh, bring them to the uh, the lower um, the lower set, and then uh, and then bring down to the up one, and uh, I should be all good. So I'm recording this after the fact, uh, but uh, as I'm editing, I'm realizing I need to clarify things that happen here. So um, I actually registered uh, one of the inputs when I was testing with with my Logic Probe. What I thought I was actually testing was um, a, a connector seven of the edge connector, which is uh, which I assume was the the part side uh, of uh, of of the connector connected to jump. What it actually was, it was uh, the uh, the G connector on the pin connector, which interestingly was connected. Uh, connected to a resistor array, connected back to the chip, 
but nothing was done with this input. So I was still registering an input, but nothing was done with it. So I, that's where my confusion was. I was like, well, I'm getting this input. It's actually going to a chip, so nothing is being done with it. Um, as it turned out, uh, my entire connector was inverted. Um, which is funny though, the, the, the input is still actually going to a chip. Um, they actually had to draw a trace, draw a trace for it and everything. Um, which is funny for a bootleg where they're trying to keep costs down and make things on the cheap. So anyway, that, that was my confusion. So let's get back to the video. There you go. So I've uh, made the changes to my uh, adapter. And when you look at the display here now, let me see if I can just align this a bit better. There you go. Uh, now, um, so you can actually enter test mode by pressing the uh, uh, fire button, and then you can test all your inputs. So you see, for player one, I'm just gonna. I only have player one here, but um, I fixed them. So uh, left, right, left, right, up, down, and uh, the uh, fire button actually uh, lets you exit that. Uh, let's see if we can coin up. Yeah, player one player. There you go. Oh man, do I feel very stupid after that? Um, but that's that's what it is. Yeah, at least uh, now this uh, plays properly. Um, so this is it, guys. This is the the bomb jag repair. Um, this was actually interesting. So, if I uh, sort of debrief what went wrong, um, well, we had a couple of, uh, of uh, caps that needed uh, to be just resetted. I didn't actually change them, I used the original ones. Uh, the Z80, the sound Z80 was dodgy. Uh, I actually thought that my inputs uh, were wrong, but it was actually just a silly mistake. I'd, uh, I'd done the, uh, the adapter wrong. Um, we ha obviously had to make an adapter. Um, and then there was this uh, this uh, 174 missing here, which was uh, causing uh, all sort of color issues. Um, it wasn't overly complicated, just a bit tedious. There was a, a number of issues and uh, some stupidity on my part. Oh yeah, and these two tabs here had to be uh, had to be fixed. Other than that, I mean, it seems to be running fine. There's no errors on the RAM, and uh, it's an interesting little board. I'm glad I made an adapter for it uh, that I can reuse because I'm actually uh, getting a couple more of these uh, at some point so uh, there you go folks I hope this was interesting and uh, well, uh, thank you for watching uh, don't forget you can uh, follow me on uh, Facebook Twitter Instagram there's a discord server if you want to talk uh, to uh, like-minded folks um, it's actually a very very pleasant discord server um, to be in and uh, there's obviously a patreon as well if you want to help the channel and uh, help me get more of these boards and tools and things to repair. Anyway folks, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.